The liver, gallbladder, and pancreas are accessory organs that are specifically associated with the small intestine. So the liver, the first of which is the di has a primary digestive function of producing bile, but it also does many other things, including a large um, amount of metabolic pathways. And bile itself is what's called a fat emulsifier. This is kind of like a detergent molecule that helps to act primarily on fat. The gallbladder is the chief storage organ of the bile itself, and it's located just posterior to the liver. The third organ described on this slide is the pancreas, which supplies most of the enzymes that are needed to digest chyme. And these enzymes break down all of the main nutrients that are in the small intestine, like the carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids, as well as also producing bicarbonate, which helps to neutralize the stomach acid because the bicarbonate has a high pH, which is alkaline. So the gross anatomy of the human liver is shown on this slide. And we're looking at a posterior view of the liver. And we can see um, on the right-hand side, the cystic duct. And the cystic duct is going to drain the gallbladder. And it combines with the bile duct and the common hepatic duct is formed by the junction where the cystic duct drains into the bile duct. So again, the cystic duct drains the gallbladder and it drains into the bile duct to form the common hepatic duct. Well, since you see on this slide the various lobes of the liver, there's four main lobes. The uh, right lobe, the left lobe, the caudate lobe, and the quadrate lobe. So the individual cells that make up the liver are referred to as hepatocytes. And each hepatocyte looks like what you see on this screen um, slide. And in the center of each uh, cell runs the uh, central vein. And at the microscopic level, if we look at this image a little more closely here, we can see the central vein and draining into this region is all of the blood vessels that are coming from the GI tract entering into the portal vein. The portal vein receives the uh, nutrient-rich blood coming from the small intestine, the large intestine. And so the main function of these hepatocytes is to detoxify the blood for metabolism. And so notice that at the union of multiple cells is what's called the portal triad. And the portal triad includes the bile duct, the portal vein, and the hepatic artery as well. So the liver, it, as I mentioned a couple slides ago, its main function is to produce bile. And bile is, um, it's a yellow green, it's an alkaline solution, so it has a higher pH and it's composed of bile salts. These are cholesterol derivatives that help to emulsify fat for absorption. So emulsify means to break down into smaller pieces for absorption, as well as bilirubin. It's a pigment that's formed from heme. And this leads into the hepato or the enterohepatic circulation. So we can see the enterohepatic circulation on this next slide. Number one, um, over here on the right-hand side of this slide, shows the bile salts secreted into the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, from the gallbladder. As the bile salts travel through the small intestine, 
They allow lipid digestion and absorption to occur because they have broken down the fatty molecules. Then by the, the distal part of the small intestine, the ileum, 95% of the bile salts are reabsorbed by the ileum and they're reabsorbed and travel back to the hepatic portal vein of the liver where they can then be recycled to be used again for the next fat that has to travel throughout the small intestine. So the function of the gallbladder then is that it's a thin walled muscular sac on the ventral side, the anterior surface or underneath the liver. And its function is to store and concentrate the bile. So that's an important uh, distinction. Distinction. It doesn't produce the bile. The liver produces the bile, but the gallbladder stores the bile. And so there's muscular contractions that release the bile via the cystic duct, and that then flows into the bile duct. The most common hepatic um, homeostatic imbalance associated with the gallbladder is gallstones and this is usually caused by too much cholesterol in the diet or too few bile salts. With the pancreas we see this on our next slide here and the pancreas has a dual function. Its digestive function is that it produces enzymes and so that's what we refer to as the exocrine portion of the pancreas but there's still a small part of the pancreas which has an endocrine function, which you learned about in another chapter. There's four main parts to the, um, to the pancreas. There's the head of the pancreas. There's the body of the pancreas. The, what's called the uncinate process. And also the tail of the pancreas. So four main locations. And its location, as far as the whole organ, is it's located retroperitoneally, deep to the greater curvature of the stomach. And again, the exocrine portion is the digestive portion. This pancreatic juice, it's going to be able to break down the main nutrients, the carbohydrates, fats, and the proteins. And the endocrine portion is the part that secretes the insulin, and the glucagon. So our next slide is showing what the general function of the pancreas is. And um, the pancreatic juice that's produced, there's up to almost 1,500 milliliters a day um, produced. It's important to remember that this pancreatic juice is alkaline because it neutralizes that acidic chyme, which is coming from the stomach. Because remember, the stomach maintains a very low pH. So in addition to everything that's found in the pancreatic juice are electrolytes, bicarbonate, and then also digestive enzymes. And those include proteases for proteins, amylases for carbohydrates, lipids for lipases, or, or lipases for lipids, and also nucleases for nucleic acids. So these enzymes then, they're then going to be activated in the small intestine, as we'll see on this next slide. So the pancreatic proteases, specifically in the small intestine, are then activated. Trypsinogen is inactive, chymotrypsinogen and procarboxypeptidase are all inactive and they're activated by the chemical trypsin to chymotrypsin and carboxypeptidase.